This one's called Temporarily Lucy. So, do you have any inclination to do uh, any dates in Los Angeles down the road, Kendra? Um, a lot depends. Um, I'm kind of playing things by ear already. The, the record um, has involved a lot of work that 
kind of contradicts my inherent lifestyle. <laughs> um, and as far as gigs go, I, I do enjoy playing, but I like to set up things for specific events, uh, not just a rote club date. So if I do something, I think it will be a real big production with a lot of, a lot of other people, perhaps guild members and things that I've been playing with. Mm. And we would do some sort of extravaganza. You never know. Um, there may be a date, but I may need a little break soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to catch uh, some of the listeners who may not be up to speed with uh, you know, your, your recent history, um, after Dream Syndicate and your work with David Roback on Opal, and um, I, you know, I guess it was, what, eight years ago or so you headed up north and um, into, what, Humboldt County area and sort of unplugged, really. Yeah, I definitely unplugged. <laughs> And in fact, uh, for a while, you were living without electricity, without running water. And I don't know, do you have electricity now? Um, well, I, I had a running cold water. And I have a little electricity now that uh, comes from solar panels. Mm. And um, it, what it boils down to is a lot in the summer and very little in the winter. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I've gotten pretty accustomed to, to adjusting my activities based on seasons and day length. When I first moved up there... Because our only light was kerosene, um, it really changed the whole way you look at day and night. Hmm. But um, I have a little now, and uh, it's uh, it works pretty well. Well, um, it must have been, you know, uh, when you first landed up there, it must have been uh, a while before you really started coming back to music. I mean, unless you were doing some acoustic stuff, and that sort of thing. Um, how much time did you spend away from, from composing and, and music? Well, I, I moved up there officially around 89 or 90, and um, I may have noodled around a little bit, but I really didn't want to think about it or hear it for at least a couple years. So really, uh, about the date of the Guild record was when I really started to think about music again, which is also about the time I got my pump organ. And... Uh, I just, uh, part of the move was just to immerse myself in some other things, learn some other things, and to try and get, uh, my thoughts were that if I did end up doing music again, I wanted to do it from a place where I was, uh, where it was unaffected, uh, so to speak, from what else is going on, what other people are doing, um, from all the, the uh, sort of different goals you and ideas you get about what you would get out of music if you do it as a career. Hmm. Um, I had kind of decided that if I was going to continue to play, it would have to really force me. <laughs> and um, it did eventually. So when you listen to music, when you're, when you're uh, in the garden or whatever, if you listen to music, what sort of music is it that you listen to? Well, in the garden, the best music of all is the birds. <laughs> of course. And their song makes the plants grow. You know, I listen to a lot of uh, different things. Um... I have a little tape player that works now and then. <laughs> so it's always on cassette then and uh, whatever happens to fall into your hands. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, that's the random factor again. I think that if something's really good, it'll reach my ears. Maybe not the day it was released, but eventually. And uh, I kind of trust in, in that for turning me on to things. And after a certain number of years, um, if you really listen to and study music and love it, you realize that you heard about everything. I mean, I can't say that about uh, music from other cultures, but as far as pop music goes, I can almost imagine anything you could possibly do, and it's in my head. <laughs> hmm. So it's your life in uh, Northern California over the last uh, uh, seven, eight years or so that um, are the backdrop for the music that we're hearing this morning. Um, to a degree, and this has been a, an item of much discussion, whether or not living in the nature affects my music. Um, my basic belief is that uh, music's a real internal thing, and the ex external factors, you know, affect it to a certain degree. But maybe you can just hear it better now. Yeah, that's it. It created space to to hear it. Now I can hear when I'm walking in the woods and a melody comes into my head. I know it's not something I just heard on the radio, <laughs> you know. So I feel like you can get a sense for original melody and and for the ones that actually suit your own body frequency or suit um, the, the moods you're in, uh, it's, it just seems a little bit more pure. Hmm. 